Okay, this video is talking about, um, we're still applying properties of exponents, but this time we are going to focus specifically on rewriting rational exponents as radical expressions. So we're going to still be looking at this um, rule here, and remember that this piece right here, this is my rational expression, and this guy here is my radical expression. And so we're going to be flipping back and forth primarily this in this video from rational to radical. And so let's just start here with kind of an easy one. Um, it says rewrite as a radical expression. And so I know that the half power here or this 2 represents a square root of x to the first power. So I could put this 2 and this 1 here. That seems a bit redundant for what we know. So a normal square root doesn't need the 2 right here. It's just implied by the square root. And x to the first is just x. So anything to the 1 half power is just the square root of whatever term it happens to be. So when I look at this guy, I've got two different ways that we can look at this. But I know that for my root, I'm always looking at my denominator. And so my denominator is going to be what root I'm looking at on the outside. I have my term on the inside. And then I have my choice. I can either make my exponent be on the inside, or remember that I can go ahead and take my fourth root here, and I can do that exponent very last on the outside. Both of those are perfectly acceptable answers as a radical expression. So when we take it up a notch here, the first thing that I would do in a problem like this where my fractional or my rational exponent here is on the outside is I would go ahead and I would do my exponent rules and then I would um, simplify from there. So I have 8 to the 1 -third. I have x to the 1 -third. And I have y to the 3 times 1 -third. So the reason why we're doing this is if there are terms that we can simplify, we want to simplify them first, and we only want the pieces that are inside of the root to be left inside of the root. So when I look at my chart, I'm looking for the cubed root of 8, or 8 to the 1 -third power. Yeah, sure enough, that comes out even. And I've got x to the 1 -third power. And now I've got y, and I've got 3 times 1 -third. Well, that's just 3 thirds which is 1. So I've got 2x to the 1 third y. Now here's where it gets interesting. These two pieces right here do not have a fractional exponent. So they're going to sit outside here. And then I'm going to take my piece that does have a fractional exponent. Its denominator is 3. And x is what is left inside. And so I know here that is this supposed to be an x? Okay. I know here that I started with all of these things having a fractional exponent, but after I simplified, I noticed, whoa, it does not have a fractional exponent any longer. So therefore, it does not need to be in any sort of radical expression. It's going to be sitting out in front because it took care of itself as I simplified. So bottom line is, after you are simplifying each of your terms, you're going to find out which one still has that fractional exponent or that rational expression. And that is the piece that's going to have its root. The other terms that you simplified are going to be sitting out in front, and they're all multiplied. So let's look at one last problem here. This one has um, division happening on the inside, but it still has this rational um, exponent on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify everything on the inside of this that I can first, and then I'm going to worry about this exponent. So I see that 1,024 and 4, those are divisible, and I end up with 256. And then for my exponents, I have x to the 15th on the top and just x on the bottom. And so this x is going to cancel, and the 4th. That 15 will become a 14 because I canceled one of the x's away from it. So here's what I'm left with. 
256, this is inside my parentheses, x to the 14th, all of this to the 1 4th power. So now I'm going to um, go ahead and I'm going to do my normal exponent rules here and I'm going to put these on the inside. So I now have 256 to the 1 4th and I've got x to the 14 times 1 4th. So I'm looking at my quartic chart here and 256 to the 1 4th power or the 4th root of 256, well that comes out even and it happens to be 4. And then I've got x to the um, 14 fourths power and I can simplify that. So I've got 4x to the 7 halves power. So in terms of what I have, I do not have a fractional exponent here with my 4. It's going to be sitting out in front as a standalone term. I do, however, have a fractional exponent here with my x term. And I notice that my denominator is telling me that I'm going to have the square root of something. And here's what I have the square root of, x to the seventh. So after I have simplified that, I have 4 times the square root of x to the seventh. And I could also write that as 4 times the square root. And I better put parentheses here because that seventh power only applies to the x, not to the 4. And I could write this either way. These are both absolutely correct answers. So we're going from fractional exponents, rational exponents, down here to radical expressions, simplifying as I can along the way. Let me know what questions you have.